Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is part three of my Obsessed with Plaid series, and we're gonna delve right into making a plaid vest. So let's get into it. If you haven't seen the other two videos of this series, then you can check that out right here in the Obsessed with Plaid playlist. Now in today's video, I get to delve into making the actual official vest with the plaid fabric. Now because this fabric is plaid, therefore it has some stripes and some you know, lines to follow, it is going to take a little bit more planning on the front end of the project to make sure that everything lines up. Also because the vest has different lines just in the sewing pattern, I want to make sure that it's organized so that all those lines don't contradict and make it look like a hot mess. So it's going to take some planning. I also want to see if I can have some of the lines match up from the skirt into the vest so that when I wear them all together it will look like a continuous plaid outfit. Uh, but we'll see how that goes. So like I did in my skirt, I'm going to sew the lining and the outer fabric separately and then put them together at the end. I'm also going to machine sew the lining because it can handle the machine and hand sew the plaid. Um, and then when I insert the lining, I will hand sew that in. Just because the plaid really does not like the sewing machine. And in all honesty, I have nowhere to go. We're quarantined and uh, might as well just take the time to do this right and hand sew it well. All right, I think that's all I need to say for now. So let's get started on making this vest. I have my pieces all cut out. They are all on the floor, vaguely where they need to be attached to each other. And uh, my next step is to organize my brain a bit <laughs> and then I can start sewing. Um, I'm pretty sure I started cutting things out around noon or maybe one and now it's four. <laughs> but it's done now. It'll be what it'll be, and now I can move on to actually putting it all together. All right, so I have my three front left pieces here, and I've decided to attempt to do something a little bit different than what I did with the mock-up and what I'm gonna do with the lining. Now with those, when I put them together, I did the normal thing and I put right sides together, which what happens because of this curve down here, so the, they're curving two different ways, is that what you end up having to do is turn this curve kind of outwards so that it matches up. And it's really difficult and it can be really finicky and I don't enjoy it. So what I'm gonna do instead is actually iron down the seam allowance, which you can see right here. And I'm going to align it directly onto the front side of the other piece. Basically just skipping out that whole turning it inside out to turn it outside out process. And I'll show you that right here. So here I have the other side already pinned in place and so right here you can see that I've overlapped the seam allowance so that it is perfectly matched and then pinned it down of course. 
And then what I'm going to do is go in and do some really small, neat felling stitches so that this lies nice and flat and clean compared to my mock-up over here, which kind of gets a little wonky and has some gathers and just isn't as clean or as nice. And I did that by matching up the seam allowances and sewing it like on a sewing machine like that. I just don't think that that would work for the plaid and I think this might work out a little better. So we will give it a go and see if I like it. And if I don't like it, then I guess I'll go back to doing it the other way. Um, but I think this is going to work. <laughs> In my interesting mind, I think it's going to work. So here we have the pieces pinned together, and I quite like the layered look that it gives. I also think I did a pretty good job matching up the lines on the bottom uh, for many of them, but I did not do a good job matching up lines across. So now I'm going to go through and baste in here. I think I'm going to do permanent basting that goes through the layers of fabric but doesn't show on this front layer just to secure it a bit more and then I will go through and do a very small felling stitch around here so that it just secures that to the front and it looks nice and clean. But for right now it is 1.30 in the morning <laughs> uh, so I think I'm going to pack this up for the night and go read. So uh, I'll catch you guys later.
So I took a little field trip to my sister's today and got plenty of work done when I was there. And I'm so happy with how this is looking. And I think I'm just going to continue doing this method. Now, if you can see here, I actually, here I have fell down those edges. Whereas down here, they haven't been filled down yet. So you can definitely see a difference between those two spots. Uh, but I do think that the basting, the permanent basting on the back is working and you can see that maybe there you go these little nicks right there that's the basting that keeps it pretty sturdy in place and then I'm going in and filling it here just to keep that edge down and overall I'm just so happy with how it's coming out so I'm just gonna keep on plugging along uh, I'm a little puffy because allergy season has begun and that means the death of me. <laughs> I have decided to take a very small break um, from sewing to think about what I want to do for the buttons. Uh, I don't have buttons right now and I can't really go shopping for buttons right now. So I thought I'd attempt to make the fabric covered buttons with pre-existing buttons that I have. And I have these buttons from a top that I got at a thrift shop and I replaced the buttons on the top because I didn't like these. And I don't think that I will use them at all for anything. So if I could make them into fabric covered buttons and use them for the vest, then that would be a great way to repurpose them. So let's see what we can do with them. Now I have plenty of scraps from the wool to play with and my biggest issue that I think I'm going to come across with doing this is the fact that this frays pretty easily so it's really not a good idea to sew very close to the edge of the fabric or else it'll just come off. So I need to figure out how to make them not so bulky but also not sewing too close to the edge of the fabric. Uh, I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that, but let's play around with it. I also saw a video where they placed a little bit of fluff into the little packaging <laughs> with the button so that it created a more like rounded curved surface. So I thought I'd play around with that idea too. So, uh, I made a ball. <laughs> um, I think the fluff, the 
stuffing that I put in it made it too thick and I think maybe my fabric is too wide for the button. So I'm gonna take it apart and try again. So that looks much better if it focuses on it. But the problem is, is this giant clump of fabric in the back. So I guess when I'm ready to put it on the vest, I will play with it and see if I can make it work. Otherwise, I will figure out another button option. All right, guys, I'm so excited because this is really coming together. I've got all the pieces attached for the plaid and I really just need to finish those up by filling the seams down. Um, I have some, some done and some not done. Uh, and then from there, I obviously need to work on the lining. I need to insert the lining. I need to uh, figure out the lapels and the collar, but it's coming along. So let's keep going. Hey guys, it's been a good three to four days since I've chatted with you. Um, I basically was able to go back to sewing after working on the buttons and then I got to the point where it was time to work on the collar and the lapel for my vest. And let me tell you, that did not go well. I think I attempted the collar probably four or five times. I would sew it in and then test it and it wouldn't work and I'd take it out and do it again and I tried doing it with interfacing and then I tried doing it with wool to wool and then I tried doing it with just the lining on as a under collar and then the wool as a top collar and it was just like nothing was working out and I got so frustrated the other day that I'm like, you know what, I'm done. I'm going to watch a stupid show. I'm watching Meteor Garden, by the way. Um, it's addicting and frustrating all at the same time. So I turned that on and I poured myself a gin and tonic and chilled. And then a couple hours later, I was like, maybe I just need to redraft the collar pattern. <laughs> And that's what I did. I went back to my pattern pieces, got some tracing paper, and I redrafted the pattern. And I took a look at uh, a pattern making book that I have, and I redid it. And it turns out that my color pattern was wrong the entire time. <laughs> so once I got that right, then everything went pretty smooth after that. Uh, I didn't film a whole lot of the process mainly because I know I'm not doing it right um, in general. Uh, it's This is not how you do a collar and lapel and I didn't want to put that on camera. <laughs> Just to have some people be like, that's not how you do it. Uh, so yeah, I got it on there. It I'm happy with it. Uh, I, the collar is wool on the top collar and lining on the bottom collar, no interfacing because it's too thick for that. But the lapel is wool on both sides, which does make it stick out a bit more than I'd like because it's just so thick. Uh, but overall, I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's it, The collar falls right and the lapels look nice, so I'm going to keep moving on. So the next step is going to be doing this whole thing again with the lining. However, the lining I do, uh, I'm going to do on the sewing machine. So it's definitely going to go by faster. And once that's all done, then I can put the whole thing together. I still need to figure out what I'm doing with the buttons, but we'll get there when we get there.
你。All right, guys, we are so very close to the end of this project. I have the lining inserted, and my last step is to put in the buttons and button holes. I also have some touch-up things that I need to do and some felling stitches that I need to finish, but I am so close. Now, when it comes to the buttons, I still am going to try this fabric button that I made with the wool. And what I did is on the back, I trimmed that back bundle as much as possible and then stuck some glue, fabric glue, on it. And it should dry clear, but we will see. Um, and then from there, I will sew it onto the jacket and see if it functions as a button. If it does not, or if it doesn't not, or if it doesn't turn out well, then I think I'm going to try to do a fabric covered button still, but do it with the lining fabric because that's not nearly as thick. So I'm going to give it a go, see how it looks, see how it works, and if it doesn't, then I'll go from there. So for the buttonholes, my first step is to go in and backstitch a rectangle where the buttonhole slit is going to be. I do this because this fabric really lends itself to fraying and I want to secure this area before I go in and cut that slit. So now that I have the rectangle in, I'm going to go ahead and cut this slit out and then secure it with buttonhole stitches, which you can see here. So now that I've got that cut, you can see it's already starting to fray, but it does stop at that rectangle. So that is why I wanted to do that first off the bat, and now I can go in and do the buttonhole stitches. All right, buttonholes are done. So now I just get to move on to figuring out the buttons. Hi. So, after uh, three weeks, five Pirates of the Caribbean, six Star Wars, and 49 episodes of Meteor Garden, the vest is finally done. Now, of course, once I got the vest on today, I realized that I didn't fell down one seam. Which is an easy fix. That's a task that I can finish without taking the garment apart. It's perfectly fine. Uh, but I just... <laughs> I worked so hard, but then again, there are like 5,000 seams. So, you know, cut me some slack. Alright, so to wrap up, there have definitely been some things that I have learned throughout this process. And there are things that my eyes have been open to. And there are things that I am very much aware that I need to improve upon. <laughs> One thing, for example, is the damned collar and lapel. I know that I didn't insert it properly, which is why I didn't really film it, uh, and I know that I need to figure that out, uh, but it wasn't going to happen with this project. There's so many things that I was trying to focus on and learn and understand that when it came to the collar and lapel, I was trying to wrap my brain around it, and for some reason, I could not understand how one inserts a collar and lapel. So I did it my own way. I think it turned out alright. Uh, I think maybe in the future when I actually grasp this idea then I'll probably go back and 
fix it. I also realized that my collar is slightly crooked and I really don't know how that happened <laughs> but uh, meh. and that's another thing is you know it could be something like my shoulders are crooked like I've got one higher than the other or you know something else is going on with my own body that made this uh, wonky and it has been a journey for me to understand how patterns correlate and fit onto the human form. Patterns are made for the average person, therefore they do not fit most people. <laughs> so it's important to understand that yes, starting with a pattern is great, especially when you are starting out with sewing, but patterns are not the end all be all. And if you do want garments to fit well, you're going to have to work pretty hard on the mock-up to get it to fit your body personally. Now besides the collar and lapel, which I've discussed a thousand times, we're good, we can move on. I still need to learn about sleeves, sleeve holes, sleeve areas. Because uh, it's just every time I do them, they just kind of end up a little wonky and there's some like wrinkling that goes on there. Uh, I think I did better on this than I have in past projects, but I still think that I can learn more about that. And I think part of it with many aspects of sewing is just doing it again and again and again and learning as you go. To some extent, you can't be taught everything when it comes to sewing. And that's, that can be said about a lot of different things. To some degree, you have to learn on your own and you have to experiment and you have to grow by messing up. Now, when it comes to the buttons, you can obviously see that I went with those fabric wool covered buttons uh, and I am happy with them. However, they do not um, go in easily <laughs> uh, because it is wool on wool. It, there's a lot of friction and getting the button in the buttonhole is not simple. However, I'm really happy with them once they're in there. So I don't think I'm going to change those. However, I'm going to see how they go over time because I have a feeling that they'll probably start to fall apart with wear and tear pretty quickly. So I'll keep an eye on them and I might change them to something else later on. We will see. I also enjoy the placement of the buttons. However, I do think I'm gonna add a hook and eye right here because I don't want another button there, but I do think it puckers a little too much. Now for some pros for this project, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I am so glad that I decided to go with the method that I did for putting the wool pieces together. I think that turned out so much better than it would have if I had done it the way that I had done the mock-up or the lining. I'm also really happy with how the lines match up. I think I did a good job with that. That took a lot of mental capacity. And like I said previously, I was so focused on the lines going up and down that I totally spaced the lines going side to side. But I don't mind that. Uh, I also know that if I had done that, then it would have wasted a lot more fabric and I didn't want to do that. So I I'm happy with how those turned out and I think it looks really good. I was definitely worried with um, the sewing lines of the all the different you know pieces put together contradicting with the lines of the plaid but I think it turned out really nicely and I'm so happy with how it looks. So there we have it guys. This was hard. <laughs> There were definitely points that I just kind of wanted to give up and there are points that I was so excited that I wanted to keep going. Even though this was probably not the best project for me right now when it comes to my sewing skills, I think it was also necessary for me to push myself. Now before I run off and do a little montage of me wearing clothes, I just want to encourage you to take this opportunity and pull out that project that you might be a little scared of. Take it slow and let yourself learn and grow. And let me know what projects you're working on. I'd love to hear about them. All right, go ahead and leave me a comment below, like this video, or even subscribe if that's your thing. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay sane. I'll see y'all next time.